It is a brand new season, so you guys already know that it is time for us to release this season's tier list. I am really excited to hop into this one because, man, every time we get a new season, things get a lot more spicy. But as of recent, all of the heroes got their second ability, and we got a brand new hero with the neon in the game. There were a ton of balance changes as well, so I feel like this is going to be the most shook up tier list that we've ever seen in T3 Arena history. It took me a little bit of time to figure out where I wanted to place these heroes, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below once we start to move them around, but without further ado, we're going to start doing this by first moving each class. So we're going to start off with the tank class, right? This old tier list, it's so crazy looking at it because it's so different now, but for the tanks, Let's see here, Zero Kelvin is actually going to be the one coming down from the OP tier, the biggest drop you've ever seen in T3 history, and he's going down into the C tier. I just feel like Kelvin has no value in this current meta. He actually has a really cool second ability, but I feel like if you're going to be a tank in this season, you have to have some shield, and this one's going to surprise you guys maybe a little bit, but I'm actually going to be moving Victor from C tier up into the B tier. I feel like he is a better tank than Kelvin because at least Victor can close the distance between him and his target with the double dashes that he has and actually his damage reduction is really strong like when he starts to spin his gun in a circle you do almost no damage to him so if a team synergizes and plays around the Victor then it's actually a really really you know decent hero he can be decent of course he's still not gonna be able to compete with the likes of some of the other shield heroes in the game but still he plays it out pretty well so for the other tanks, we have Fade and um, Fort. These two are going to stay in the A tier. I like them both a lot. For the S tier, we have Jabali and we have Ruby, who's actually coming up from B all the way into the S. For both of these tanks here, I just, I really think Ruby, I mean, she was OP at one point after these balance changes. She's now an S tier hero, in my opinion. She can't just walk around and solo everybody super easily, but she still has a mobile shield that has three shields on it. And she gets the cooldown up pretty quickly as well. So I just feel like Ruby being an aggressive tank is one of the best tanks in the game. And then Jabali is one of the best tanks if you're trying to play a full-on just pure tank. He has so much shield. He does burst damage that goes really quickly. You're able to just like do damage and put your shield back up. And these two are just extremely strong if you want to play a tank. For Fort and Fade, they're pretty strong as well. That's why I have them here in the A tier. Fort's damage reduction and his shield are a really good combination. And Fade, honestly, has a very, very annoying shield as well. And then, of course, he has that peel with his dash. Like, Fade can be a super, super strong hero in the game. One thing I do want to say is um, B tier are going to be, like, niche heroes. So, I think most heroes in this game or in this season are pretty solid all across the board. I think this is the most balanced the game has ever been. So, you're going to find a lot landing in these S and A tier categories. B tier, if you're extremely good at them... Fair play to you. You can play them at a, at a high level, then you should. And C tier, it's the same thing. If you can play them at a high level, go for it. But this is just a general tier list, and this is just my opinion. But moving on, next we have the healers. I do want to talk about the healers because we're going to have another massive drop from the OP tier into the C tier. That's two of them, man, from Kelvin. And now with Chemist, I just feel like Chemist is the worst healer in the game. She just doesn't do enough, especially with Labula being in the game now and turned into a healer. Labula is pretty much just a better Chemist. The bullets travel to their targets faster. He has a really good ability to keep his teammates alive underneath the beacon. Like, Labula just brings so much more value to the game than the Chemist. And Labula is actually going to be staying here in the A tier while Chemist drops down to the C. Um, as far as the healer in the B tier, I have Iris going into the B. This one was interesting and it was a difficult decision for me to make. Um, but I feel like, for whatever reason, most people actually don't like to use her gun. Like, they feel like she's bad now that they made her gun worse. I personally think they made her gun a little bit better and it allows you to focus on healing, but she can also deal some decent damage, especially if you start to land those headshots. But nonetheless, I keep her in B because I see a lot of people don't know how to play her. She is a higher skill cap healer now, but she still has a very, very strong ultimate. Either way, though, we do have a new healer in the game with the Neon, and I believe that Neon is actually an A tier healer right next to the Labula. The single target healing ability for the Neon, the mobility on her as well. I was so close to like, I was trying to debate, do I want to put her into S or not? But I feel like, let me just chill out. Let me start with the A tier and continue to see how the meta progresses. But I just feel like that single target healing and the ability to travel across the map pretty quickly. And then of course the invincibility that can really, really change fights. I just feel like Neon is actually a strong healer. And if she just sits on her tank, they will not die. For the S tier, I still have Sindri. She was 
apparently considered OP when she got the nerf previously. They lowered her damage as well. But I still think that Sindri is the best healer in the game. The drone just provides so much support. When you really think about it, like having that drone ability to be able to look around and get information so you can see where people are coming from, having that extra man on the field, like the, the fact that she can just heal without having to heal if you're standing next to targets, you're healing so you're able to focus on attacking while still healing your teammates. And then of course the ability to just have those super heals when they're standing next to you or to the drone. I just feel like Sindri is the best healer in the game right now, so we're gonna be throwing her up into the S tier. On to the flankers now. This one was probably the hardest one for me to place. It took me the longest amount of time to think about it, but I like where I put these flankers. So in the C tier, I'm keeping Vincent here. I know you see T3 God and all these other guys sometimes running around and dominating with the Vincent. I feel like he's actually harder, way harder to use now than he was before. I had him in C tier before. And now, like, he has that three-second cooldown between his abilities. Like, he can't just, like, kill and go back invincible, kill and go back invincible. I like him in C. If you play him well, Vincent's crazy. You can, especially in these 5v5 game modes, you can work your way around the map. You can just, there's so much, like, distraction going on. So you're actually able to get some good value with Vincent, but it takes a lot, and I mean a lot of skill. I still don't think people are going to play him if they're playing in a serious match, $10,000 match. You're not going to see somebody whip out the Vincent, in my opinion. And if they do... They just cracked at the game. Um, but for the B tier here, we've got a couple. Aletta is going to be coming down from the OP tier into the B tier. And Diggy's going to be coming. Oh, she stays here. Okay, so Diggy and Aletta are both my B tier flankers. Aletta, oh boy, I should have dropped her into C. I was like, I was like, oh, I dropped her into C tier. But I got to be completely honest with you. When it comes back to the high skill cap thing, I think a lot of pro players are actually still really, really good with Aletta. Her ceiling is super high still, so if you're able to jump, double jump, and dash really well, the super good Alettas also have really good positioning. And then her ult is just icing on the cake. You know, you obviously don't get it as much as you used to or heal up as much as you used to, but she's still pretty strong. You, in a way, you kind of do get double heals with the ult and the fact that you can teleport back. So I feel like she's a high skill cap hero, but she is still kind of weak when you compare it to some of the other heroes in the game. So B tier is a solid spot, but don't be surprised if you run into some Alettas dealing some crazy damage and just i'm honestly shaking and baking you because aletta is a very very high skill cap hero um into the a tier next we've got ya ya is an a tier in my in my opinion she's an a tier um flanker and shell comes down from s into a she was another one that i was debating i almost wanted to put her uh, aletta and diggy all in the same tier but i just feel like i mean diggy is just hard to use i mean her animation on the teleport if they made that animation a little bit better made it so where she didn't take damage while she was doing the teleport and made it to where it's just quicker i feel like diggy can be a higher tier but she just feels kind of slow and sluggish it's very easy to telegraph her abilities and she's quite honestly pretty easy to kill um so i i just i feel like she's b the reason why i gave aletta a over that is because invincibility is obviously a really strong ability but on top of that, I feel like it's really easy to land headshot damage with her because the beam is so big. So if you're able to land those headshots, you can deal more damage than maybe some of these other SMG or flanker heroes. So I do like having Aletta here in the A tier. It's very close. A lot of these flankers are very close. If you're obviously, like I said, if you're really good with these heroes, play them because they are really good. And then for the S tier, we have uh, Johnny. Johnny Jet's coming up from the B tier into the S tier. I feel like personally, he's the best flanker in the game right now. Um... You get a lot of utility out of his invis invisibility, his heals, which is not the craziest heals in the world, but it's the fact that you can just go invisible at a moment's notice. He also has that ability with the ball now to just throw it down onto the field, so it's like an extra target, almost like Sindri's turret. The enemy has to look at it, they have to deal with it, and you can just deal out so much damage. He's got the burst damage as well, being able to play on top of the payload, play on top of the control point. Like, Johnny Jet is annoying. There are some counters to him, but I feel like for the most part, especially with this current meta, when I am looking to dominate and I have to play a flanker, I am going to play Johnny Jet. His speed boost is incredible as well. And honestly, it's a pretty good ultimate because a lot of people are playing really close together, playing on top of shields in these 5v5 game modes. So they're going to be putting down, or they're going to be grouping up, which allows you to find more value with your ultimate. Now into the favorite role, the role that everybody plays, the DPS. What do we have going on here? So surprisingly, there's no DPS that falls into the C tier um so going into b we have kazuma i'm keeping him here i still think he's a good fit into the b they made him a little bit better now that he can fly and that he can um he has more health it's decent but i feel like the meta man it's just if you're gonna if you're gonna be doing damage you gotta really be able to tear through some of these shields and you really gotta be able to find value and kill people quickly 
I don't see it with Kazuma. If you can play him well, once again, these B tiers are going to be the heroes. Like, if you play them well, you can play them easily at an A level. And you could even argue S maybe if you're the GOAT. Um, but I like Kazuma here in the B tier. Christina, I'm dropping her down from A to B. I just feel like in 5v5s, man, I, I just feel like she's not as good. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I just haven't seen a good Christina. But it's sort of the same thing along with the Cosmo where that AoE damage, it sounds like it should be good. But because it just doesn't tear through, sh I, I don't know. I just I just can't find the same value. And I might be tripping with Christina because I've seen some good Christinas. And she can two-shot you if you're standing in the open. So I could be tweaking with this. Yeah, this is probably the highest tier B tier hero. If you can play her at an A level, do it. I just, I don't know, man. I I just think she's a B tier hero. I think her utility is not as good as some of the other DPS in the game. Now, moving on to the A tier, we've got some fun ones here. I think Hualing is going to come out of the OP tier and actually end up landing here in the A tier. She is still pretty good, but she did get some a few nerfs. She can't one-shot a lot of the other heroes in the game now. You have to almost always be fully charged if you want to get that value. So I just feel like having her in the A tier, her second ability, the invisibility, it's it's good. But because she goes back in a straight line, you can still find her out pretty easily, in my opinion. And I just feel like she's an A tier hero. The only thing I do want to add is you got to remember right now we only have the first ultimates in the game. So it's going to change, especially for heroes like like Shell, who's or and we're Scatty, Shell, Scatty, that are really good with their second ultimate. Those are not in the game yet. When they come back, the tier list probably gets shaken up a little bit more. I'm just going to talk about her counterpart, Osas S tier, man. Osas, Osas, Osas. I feel like he's been the most balanced but best hero in the game ever since the game released. I believe he's only had like one balance change to him, if any. I think it was just one though. But he's just the utility he offers with his smoke for himself, for his teammates. The fact that he can check around him with his, his, um, his passive ability. He still has some really good charge shots. He can one-shot a lot of the heroes. He can really turn the tide of the fight. And now he has more mobility to move around. I think Osas continues to remain here in the S tier. He's just, he's an absolute, he's just pleasant to play with, to be completely honest with you. Um, looking back into the A tier now, we have Judix. Judix stays here in A. I really, really, really like Judix. I I don't think she's O or S yet. She's very close to it. And I personally, she's probably going to be one of my main heroes that I play. Um... But four bullets, of course, can be a little bit dicey. Her close range isn't super strong. But I feel like with all of her spam now, with the flashbang, the slows, I feel like she has a lot of value. Uh, so I do like her here in the A. But I'm telling you right now, she's my top. She's a top five hero for me in this specific season. Scatty, I'm actually going to bring down from S to A. I feel like Scatty's strength, a lot of it comes from that second ultimate. When it comes back, we'll see if she can hang at the S tier. Um, but honestly, I prefer Judix over Scatty with this specific build, with this specific utility. But don't sleep on Scatty. She can tear through and deal a lot of damage. I actually feel like she can carry games really hard. So I could be bugging by putting her here in the S tier. Like, I'm actually in the A tier. So I'm, I'm trying to debate right now if I'm tweaking or not. She might be one of the higher A tier heroes. When the second ultimate comes back, maybe S. I don't know. But when I've been playing these games, she's she's good. I'm going to hold her in S, though. So a lot of people might crucify, crucify me for this. I know Scatty's a strong hero. I just feel like some of the utility to be an S tier, you got to have that just just a little bit more utility. And she has that with her second ultimate. But for now, we keep her here in the A tier. We've got Gloria. I don't even have to say much about her. Everybody loves Gloria. People might even try to tell me to put her in the S tier. She's so much better now that she can camp right hand peaks. And she can also hold down an angle and like watch her own flank with her second ability. So Gloria is actually really strong. She's got the full sprint shotgun. It's close, man. This is another hero. Like I said, if you're an if you're an S or you're an A, you're goaded. These are the heroes that are gonna be, I feel like, playing the meta and doing really well. So either or, if you want to play Gloria, play Gloria. She's a really good hero. I have Mark here in the A tier as well. That's another close call because he has a lot of damage, but he's also like a flanker now with his little skateboard. He can go by or his hoverboard. He can go by really really fast. He can reload while on the hoverboard. Mark is a big 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 threat. It's still very linear um, as far as utility goes. But that linear, that, that ability to be linear is actually one of his strengths. Um, but once again, when I when I look at S, I always look at U2. Who, who does a little bit more? Like at the highest level of the game, if someone's playing that character and utilizing their full kit, who is going to do more, you know? And so that's the reason why I end up having Mark here in the A tier. For S though, well, first of all, <laughs> best character in the game, Galen's OP tier. That's not even a doubt. She is the, me I mean, the meta shield heroes. 
she counters the meta with her ability to just laser through people when you have a good gatlin and she's well protected and well positioned gatlin is op there's just i can't really say too much about that and even in the close range she's strong with her second gun i mean incredible hunters coming down from the op tier and i have them actually down here into the s tier so when i look at dps i, I just really believe that osas and hunter i don't know if i want to add a third i just feel like i can't do it if i had to dude if i had to it might be gloria believe it or not it's so close it's so close but i just feel like when like i just don't think glory is on the level of hunter the fact that hunter's headshot damage is incredible the fact that he has a <clears throat> self peel with his ultimate you can't even flank him otherwise a good hunter will just peel you off him with the ultimate and deal 2000 damage and as you're in the air kill you and he has a heal that's what I talk about. I'm talking about S. That's S tier. Gloria's really close. She's A, but it's, it's too simple. It's too straightforward. Doesn't have the self peel. So at the highest level, she might be able. She might struggle against some of the better players. So I do like having her in A. I know Scatty has a bug where she can jump across the map with her ability. So you could argue S there, but I still think she's kind of straightforward, which is not a bad thing. It's just that when it, when I when I look at the utility of these S tier heroes, it's built different. It's built different. And some people might give me slack on this Jabali as well. I just, I, I don't know, man. I, I think Jabali's strong as a pure tank. And I think this is a pretty good tier list for this season. A lot of the heroes here did end up in the A tier. And I think that's a good thing. It means that the game is really balanced. These characters have a little bit more edge, a little bit more utility. Most people don't even utilize and maximize their characters to the fullest anyway. So because of that, I really do believe any S or A tier heroes are good. Because if you can't utilize what makes these heroes S tier, then they play at the A tier level. And you might as well play... Like a glory over a hunter if you're not gonna end up using his utility perfectly um but honestly i'm happy with this tier list it looks strong we'll see when the second abilities come back we'll see when um yeah we'll just see as the season goes on but i like this one a lot i think this is i think this is solid aletta's the other one i'm looking at so there's a couple here aletta i don't know if you were oh, aletta, aletta. i don't know bro i'll keep it here here to solid tier list let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below but we'll play a couple games now to finish out the video Let's rock the Jabali here. We need it. They don't have a Gatling either, so we can survive quite a bit here with our shields. Three, two, Literally, they only have... We'll see what they switch to. Mark, Christina. Very careful around me. Don't think I'm worried about those. Got the healer by herself. Did my team get split axe? Oh no. We got split. We got the point though. Good job from Johnny Jet. Just live better. Coming. Die here again. <laughs> oh, I die here again. So we got off Gatlin. Am I gonna? Am I gonna try to go for a hard carry here real quick? Or am I? I feel like I'm getting bopped by there. I'm able to kill a few people, but then the Jabali comes and kills me. I think we just lack damage. Carry Gaddy. I'm a maximum speed. I'm a Tracking hostiles. There we go. We got somebody else to pick up tank. Now I can just sit here and fry. 
heroes. <laughs> Me. In the library, bro. Reading that play like a book. <laughs> bro, what? That shield actually lasts a long time now, bro. That, sh <laughs> that shield is quite good. I'll be honest. It's impressive. Yeah, second we swap to Gaddy, bro. That's what happens. GG's. I'm actually going to go with Neon here. I really want to play Neon on uh, with the Ruby. I feel like that's... If, it's a good thing they nerfed her, otherwise that would have been one of the most... Neon is so fun, man. <laughs> Who is doing her in like that? Is that Galen? Yeah, it's gotta be. It's the only character that can do that. Now oh, they bring out their own. That's what I was expecting eventually. We get to the halfway mark, no way. Even with two deaths, that's huge. Uh, right, we just have nobody with us. The fact that we're able, able to get it to the checkpoint is huge. Because everybody was dead, it was only. Fell off a little bit right there. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Well, I didn't get the T boy off in time. No, uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't terrible. It is once again I, like there. It was not a bad ultimate. It kept us alive, but I need to do that Loki first. So that we're not waiting to do that later, you know. I just got myself killed actually by going for that heal. 
<laughs> That's what I mean, the mobility, bro. So good. They put Gatlin away, they lose, GG's. second they put that gatlin away i was like that's it <laughs> that's it bro uh neon's my favorite that's my favorite healer for sure most fun to play anyways whether you can debate between her and Sindri actually being more useful obviously in the video i said Sindri has more utility but <laughs> that's probably true to be honest but neon's definitely the most fun <laughs> 